أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى علي محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. So Jordan, I wanted to make a video today reflecting your psychology back at you. So I've done three years of training in in psychological sciences. I was a psychology pre-med major, but then I've done three years of additional psychological training, which I consider be, to be the most advanced and effective in the world. Um, they don't sell it that way, but that's what it is. It's basically Jedi training. Um, if you're familiar with authentic, authentic relating, there's a nine-month program called T3. Blah blah blah. There, there's a group of people who have happened upon to to this guy named Dekker Kunov, uh, who you should study. As like maybe uh, you seem to have mastered the Western tradition of psychology, this guy is maybe like the latest master, effective in influencing and an effective mastery of psychology, but it's rooted in a Buddhist perspective. Or a meditative perspective, and I think it would be really, um, it would really supplement your own way of thinking about psychology, a lot, like make you much more effective. Anyways, so I've trained in that, and I want to give you reflections from that point of view relative to you. So you occur to me as someone in your thought who is natively a pragmatist and reaching for a fair, just, rational idealism. Like I've watched lectures that you've done on, on what you believe on ideology. I forget the title of the lecture. Particular, it's like a interview style, and you say something like, "You don't know the limits of moral action and where it can lead." Like implying that something like a Jesus or Christ-like state, or a resurrection, is actually possible through full like a conquest of death and material reality is possible. Through perfectly embodying the logos or moral, uh, moral character or whatever you want to call it, right? Christliness. And so um, <clears throat> it feels to me like, but all your language is really about like evolutionary biology, you know, the material aspects of our bodies, uh, the evolutionary strategies of males and females. Um, evolutionary evolutionary psychology, you know, scientific research into various aspects of physiology, uh, and and so what it feels like is you're a very rationalist, empiricist, realist type of person, and you're thinking, but you're reaching for that almost Christian idealism of a Christ or a Christly state that can allow you to in some way transcend and you seem always in the search for it like wanting it trying to articulate it struggling with it but never attaining it never fully attaining it or never even fully reaching a complete faith in it right you're always like uh maybe there's a complete process faith in it but there's not a complete abiding faith in it right and it's beautiful and it's 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 very um valuable for what it is but it it seems incomplete to me and someone like for example let me contrast you with someone like Joel Osteen who is someone I also learned from and it's very different from you maybe the polar opposite right very idealistic very strongly faith oriented struggles to articulate like uh you know talks about natural law here and there and the need for good sleep and good food and health and exercise but secondary but as a secondary measure to having an abiding faith in the qualities of god and who god is and really knowing god in your heart and resting in knowing god and from that place engaging in action but as a secondary measure to having that abiding faith and building that abiding faith it's actually the faith that enables the conduit of god's power into your life and onto earth right and then action can be an expression of that and if i was to pick between the two of you i would definitely pick joel olstein 
but I wouldn't go as far as he does. I'd be more tempered by someone like you, you know, um, because I believe God did create this reality in truth, right? So natural laws and the norms of physical reality and the norms of uh, the emergent biological reality and the the emergent on top of that social reality of, you know, sexual strategies and stuff and all that, that all of that has a truth to it and a reality to it that God intended and established and he's not trying to uh let's say all the time like make exceptions to those norms you know and i happen to believe as a person of religion that you know the angels are the ones designated by god to establish those norms and to carry out his law so to speak or his habits in the universe And so what I I would want for you is to really through religion, but especially through scripture, I would obviously like from the Quran you access this, but even through the Torah or the gospel, the go the reality of the gospel, not necessarily the can canonical gospels, you know, that you access that Christ. And in, in addition to your struggle and process of struggle to attain that faith, to have that faith, to gain that faith, that is rooted in doubt that can never fully get to certainty because everything you articulate God wants to communicate himself to us and has intended this reality to communicate himself to us through the senses through the body through the heart through the spirit through every aspect of being human and we have so many aspects of being human because they allow us to fully have God communicated to us in these myriad of ways, which in some ways is comprehensive. And that's the mystery that in this finite finitude of manners in which God communicates himself to us, there is a comprehensive communication that happens. The most comprehensive of any creature, you know. And you articulate all the manners, like when you talk about moral law and, you know, you try to bring out the wisdoms and the rationale of, you know, what what is like religiosity or moral law, you know. I, you are basically, you know, you're bringing out all these, the myriad of ways in which God is communicating himself to us or has communicated himself to us or wants to communicate himself to us. But what you're, you're not never fully accessing God or knowing God. Uh, you're always focusing on the manners of communication and the possibility of communication, you know, but you're never fully attaining the communication. You're never fully knowing God fully, you know. And so that's what I would want for you is to know God fully. As a Muslim, I would want, you know, the Asma Husna, which are the beautiful names. So for us, you know, you've heard of the 99 names. That's like a Sufi thing and a th thing than Hadith. But in the Quran, which is the real thing in Islam, in the Quran, you know, it's the Asma Husna, which are the names that are beautiful, the names of beauty, you know, and the idea is, you know, Allah means the deity, Ar Rahman, which is the second most comprehensive name, uh, which is like uh, God's eminence versus his transcendence. The deity is his transcendence, and the kind, the absolutely superlatively kind, uh, is kind of his eminence, you know. And so everything is being because it has received the kindness of God. Being is the primary kindness of God upon any any being. And so, and, and being is one, you know, that kindness is one. God is kind and his kindness is being. And it is his kindness given to something that gives a being. And so I would want you to know, and then there's from the deity and the kind, there's the, the wise, the generous, the loving, the affectionate, the knowledgeable, the knowing, you know, the, the subtle, the wise, the aware, uh, the, the all powerful, the compelling, the just. And there's all these names that uh, come from a particular God expressing his kindness or his deity in particular context, you know. And so I would want you to know the Asma'i Husna, not like know them up here, but know them in your being, know them in your heart, and actually attain that, you know, uh, to know them, rather than, you know, constantly being in the struggle. And there's something beautiful about your struggle, and it, it, it helps, it, like that rational, skeptical, doubt-based kind of struggle to attain faith. 
uh, there's something beautiful in that because it brings out all the material expressions of God. Like it brings out all the, you know, the, the material aspects of things, you know, like of meaning, you know, and that's that's brilliant and beautiful. And maybe in like an overly, like a Sufi or an overly idealistic Muslim or an overly idealistic Christian uh, might need that, right? Like it might need to learn about what you're talking about in, in order to understand how to value the law, right? But, you know, um, you, you know, as someone who who's so rooted in doubt or so rooted in realism or so rooted in, in what you're rooted in and in that process, you need more of like the Christian faith. Uh, you know, what I mean by Christian faith is like you need the Armenian Christology or you need like the Ethiopian Christology or you need um, you need even a Protestant Christ, you need a Christology, you know, which which is very idealistic. And it is justification by faith alone, you know, and and you need that like that quality of like if you really have abiding faith in the qualities of God, and that's Christian language. As a Muslim, I would prefer Muslim language. Like you really need faith in like God is the kind, you know, God is the loving, God is the affectionate, God is the just, you know, and, and have abiding faith in the qualities of God, such that you start seeing these material aspects of meaning to mean those names, right? You see the material aspects of the meaning, but you're never able to fully, concisely, precisely, discreetly, you're never really discreetly able, this is the thing, you're never able to discreetly articulate the qualities of the divine, you're never able to discreetly say, other than the truth, which is a major name in Islam too, God is the truth and that's a major name for Al-Haq, you know, other than the truth, you seem to not, and even in the truth, you, you never like really indicate or point toward the absolute version. You're always trying to articulate, you know, the, you know, like, so I would want you to have the abiding faith, you know, the abiding faith in, in, in the truth and the goodness or the good or the loving, the affectionate. And um, I think you can attain that by, by studying someone like Joel Osteen or studying someone like, uh, you know, like a Sufi philosophy. Or if you study the Quran, the Quran justify like uh, the Quran, you would be like, you need to know that God is vast and knowing. Those are the two names of God I would want you to know that God is vast and knowing. Right, like that beyond materiality, beyond the limitations that life presents, beyond the tragedy of life on earth right this form of life on earth or this type of broken anthropic disorderly chaotic messy hurtful suffering filled life right beyond this i would want you to know that god in himself is knowing and he is vast and this is not the life that he created this is fallen life this is life that has fallen from the life that he created right and so this is not the life that those qualities of life which you so genuinely feel the suffering of others and your own suffering for those qualities are not intrinsic to life and this is where you and I would differ is that those qualities are not intrinsic to life life is order life is not chaos chaos life is exquisite uh, sublime order you know um, and the process of life does not necessitate the diminishment of life over time what it is is that we as conscious, uh, free willed, willing human beings have introduced flaw. We have in induced disorder and entropy into our lives. And over generations of us doing that, sinning, we have created sufficient evil to where our lives have diminished uh, a lot have diminished and will continue to diminish and death is unavoidable once that kind of entropic process happens but that the kindness of God is the resurrection right we will be resurrected and we this authentic self this authentic individual unique life that we have we will have the opportunity if we live this right life rightly and truly justly then we will have the opportunity to continue this life 
in a with the perfection without the dis with the elimination of that disorder and chaos from the life and so there will be nothing to diminish that life and we will be living in a place where no one will be able to do anything to diminish life and free will will still be there because we've established that we wanted in this first life to live a good life and to live without hurting people and live without causing stuff. so we will live in a place where God will enable us and 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 kind of put the period on the sentence where everyone will live freely but the, that freedom will no longer be uh, to choose evil or to choose good it will be to choose from amongst the good right uh, because we have chosen that by struggling to live that type of life here and now so one life in which evil was a possibility for us to do like uh, evil was like we sh we had the potential to do evil was necessary for us to, and to then have a second life uh, for freedom to be meaningful right for freedom to be if God just created us to only choose between the good when he himself is capable of doing evil then that wouldn't be true freedom that would be like a that would be we would be like artificial intelligence we wouldn't have real life of our own would not be free truly so by giving us one life where we are free to make the mistakes of evil or sin and then allowing us to live a life of mostly good or mostly evil in the next life we are given um we are given we're we, like giving us only the choices of good uh like allowing freedom only within good is is still true choice because we've already chosen that you know we really wanted to live good and do only good but we've already chosen that fully uh with our life struggle so in the second life him o limiting our freedom to what is only good and and making it so that no matter what we do or what we want to do it's good you know that is no longer a negation of freedom because we've we've chosen that freely and we've struggled for it anyways and we paid the price for it or tried to pay the price for it you know but of course grace supersedes that and is necessary to attain uh attain heaven anyways so that's that's the little thing i wanted to give you a reflection on your own psychology assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh